podcast of the American Junior Golf Association. My name is Tim Jackman. I'm the Vice President of Communications. That is Thomas Harrison. He is the Director of Tournament Operations. And then our producer, Justin, is back over there behind the camera, as always, doing all of the behind-the-scenes stuff. So uh, we have a really great episode, actually, for you today. We are going to be talking to Connor Sullivan, who is um, one of our contacts at TaylorMade Golf. We used to be a staff member of ours as well. And uh, we also have a fun little segment coming up after that, um, which we'll get into here in a minute as well. But Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tim. It's uh, It's been a good stretch here. Busy as we're trying to wrap up the summer schedule, but um, a lot of cool mm-hmm. events we're looking forward to coming up. Um, Junior President's Cup, Ping Junior Solheim Cup are two that obviously we don't have every year. So anytime um, it's... President's Cup year, Swam Cup year, those are big for us, and so those are happening to fall at the same time this year, so nice and exciting uh, September coming up for us, but really, really looking forward to the opportunities we're going to get and a lot of the good golf we're going to get to see with those two events here. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, those two events are awesome. Um, I've been to a Junior Solheim Cup, and I've been to um, all actually all of the Junior President's Cups that we've had so far, and it's just a really cool opportunity for these players to compete, and it's it's about the golf, yes, but I think it's also about all the other stuff. Like Junior Solheim Cup, they get to do, they get to go to the Solheim Cup, they get to experience that, meet the players, and they do the exact same thing with the Presidents Cup, and just being there and experiencing those atmospheres, I think is a really awesome experience for the players, both with the golf, yes, because that's important team golf and competing, um, you know, representing your country, but also what they get to do with the professional players as well. Yeah, I think it's very cool too because it's not. Just obviously anytime you could be inside the ropes is going to be super cool experience, but in such an intimate setting at those events where the teams are so small and it's, I think one of my favorite shots um, from last time we had these events was you see the girls on the range from Team USA with the American Solheim team. And so those are, teams aren't big, like those are small, those are the top players in the United States. And so they're getting a lot of one-on-one time. You're getting to shake the hand, watch them warm up on the range, take a picture and it's it's an experience you're always going to remember. It's something that obviously representing your country is, is always going to be something that's cool, especially at this stage when you're young and having that opportunity so early is just, even if you don't go on to play professionally or you go on to have a career in something else, you're always going to remember that. Like you're going to be able to talk about those moments. So that's, that's super cool for me to look at it and see just how, how special it is. And then for those professionals too, I mean, they think it's awesome as well. Like I know, um, Adam Scott, when the Australian players were on the international team a couple of years ago, he yeah. like took them under his wing. They were walking with him for the practice round. He mm-hmm. was having conversation with those guys. I think he took them out for dinner uh, one of the nights, and it was just so cool to hear something like that, that he is just like willing to make that investment as well because he knows what it means to those kids. So uh, very cool on both ends. But, yeah, something I'm I'm very much looking forward to getting to see. This will be my first Junior Presence Cup uh, that yeah, I'm on site for. So. There. Uh, very excited to head up to Montreal and see what that's all about. Yeah, the the Val sur les Lac, the the club that that is going to host the Junior President. That's flawless, Tim. That was fantastic. <sighs> been practicing, thank you. Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do speak a lot of French in Montreal, um, but that's a, just a fantastic golf course, and the committee there is really invested in this thing, and it's going to be an awesome event. Um, that's kind of uh, I alluded to earlier. We've got a, a fun little segment coming up here with with uh, Jacob Kennedy, who's in charge of our uh, kind of rules and competitions, and he. Um, has a segment about kind of that last spot because the last spot, the 12th spot for the junior president's cup of the international and USC team, as you know, Thomas is determined after the junior players championship. Um, and so that's the highest ranked player on the priority list after that junior players championship presented by Rolex. So, um, it'll be some interesting movement on there. So he's going to kind of go through some of the scenarios for us and kind of showcase what we're, what we're looking at there. So, yeah, no, it was very cool. It's something that, uh, he and I have talked about a lot, you know, as we kind of watch that leaderboard leading up to junior players. And so, um, when I approached him about the idea of, Hey, would you want to come on and kind of explain this? I know he was all excited because there's a lot of intricacies to this, yeah. um, in the point system and how that all works. So, um, very cool. I'll be interested um, to get a deeper dive in it from him. I know once you task him with something like that, I mean, he's going to he's gonna be all in on it. So yeah. very much looking forward to that. Very much looking forward to the chance to talk with Connor. Um, again, great. Really appreciate what TaylorMade's done for us um, from the professional standpoint, but also personally. I mean, they're just great people, great, um, great guys to have around. It's a great team that they've built um, there as well. So we really appreciate that relationship. And 
Uh, Tim, I'm sure you appreciate what they've done for your golf game as well. I know you <laughs> you played a couple rounds the last few days. Why don't you yeah, tell I, us a little bit about how the game's looking? How's the swing feel? Uh, well, you know, before I, I played three times this week, we had our, our leadership ret- retreat at the AJGA, and, and I played three times. And played Monday, and it was really not good. Played Tuesday, and it was bad. Like, it was bad, bad. But then I played yesterday, and it was a whole different ball game. Um, you know, the – Let's just say I shot 20, 23 strokes better yesterday than I did the day before. That's a turnaround. That is a turnaround. Um, but the <laughs> don't let me forget to ask to thank Connor for that five foot because I'll tell you what the, the QI ten woods. I mean the driver's good as we have often discussed, but the uh, the woods are just phenomenal. I mean that that ball just jumps off that club face. So no, yeah. no, I know you were. I know you were very excited when I came into your office earlier and I look at your computer screen. What is pulled up is your scorecard. <laughs> I knew I'd it had to be the post it. I knew it had to be a positive round for you, knowing that again, just on your large computer monitor in your office is just your scorecard. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy is just looking at this hole by hole, analyzing everything. Love that you're just breaking it down, getting a little film session in. Yeah. Well I don't want to go to numbers because I don't want to embarrass myself. But I shot uh four five strokes better than what my index said I should have shot. So that's pretty good. There you go. Now you're, you're going to ruin the handicap right before Russell. <laughs> I know, That's... right? No, right. Our staff match, but yeah, I know. Oh, awesome. Well, speaking of Connor, let's go ahead and bring him in here. And uh, Connor, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Excited to be here. I will try not to let Thomas uh, roast you too much, but for those of you who don't know, um, just let it happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Connor cut. used to work at the AJGA, um, and now he has gone on to work at TaylorMade as one of their reps and kind of working with a lot of junior players. So, got a lot of really great experience, and I'm sure you can kind of talk a little bit to that. So, um, I think the perfect place to start is basically just talk about your your journey, your career journey, to kind of get where you are now and and kind of what you do now. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I started uh, at the AJGA. Um, I did two internships, the first one in the summer of 2017. Uh, Southeast team, um, team one, mostly just traveling around like Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, Uh, flew to a few invitationals, which was cool. Um, And then did my second internship in 2018 as a TA. Uh, or tournament assistant, for those who don't know, um, got to travel all over the country, uh, work with every team of interns, work with a lot of different tournament directors, um, and then thankfully got hired on full time in 2019. I uh, was a tournament director for about two, two and a half years, um, and then uh, had an opportunity here at TaylorMade to join our uh, HR team, actually, uh, working with um or doing a lot of internal events, so running a lot of employee tournaments, holiday parties, like fun giveaways, just um, kind of doing a whole bunch of different stuff. I, I claimed myself as the mayor of fun when I was in that role because uh, all I did was put on fun events. So uh, so that was really cool. And then um, through my time at AJGA and then working here, got to know my now team of uh, Ryan Ressa, Corey Johnson, Andrew Morgan, um, and a few others, uh, just learning more about what they did and and how I could be of use to their team. And then thankfully, uh, just a little over a year and a half ago, almost coming up on two years, they approached me with this cool opportunity um, to join their team in, in a role that's both traveling like they do and working in the office, um, kind of helping out with a lot of AJGA um, like administrative stuff. And and so I couldn't say no and uh, jumped on that opportunity and have been here ever since. Yeah. Very cool. I know it's, it's fun getting to see you around having the known the fact that you've been on both sides of it. So um, with that, having been on the AJGA side, now the TaylorMade side, clearly you've seen why it's important to have this relationship, but could you just explain to people maybe why it is that TaylorMade's made that investment in the AJGA and kept this partnership alive? Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, this is such an invaluable partnership that that we've created with you guys, um, not only just in from our side to gain access to a lot of these junior events and, and get to hang out with 
a lot of these kids who are going to go on to play on the PGA and LPGA and DP World Tour and, and whatnot, and um, but also just to grow our investment in the game. You know, we want to always be one of those names that when you think of junior golf, you think of Taylor Bade um, and make that synonymous with the AJGA. And so I think this partnership has been great in doing that. Um, you know, you guys have done awesome work helping promote us. And I, I hope we've done the same to help promote the AJGA and junior golf as a whole. Yeah, I think it's it's awesome. And I think the 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 synergy between the AJJ and Taylor made has been really cool to see, especially develop over, you know, the course of, of the last 10 years. But I mean, really Taylor made has been a partner of the AJGA for, I think over 30 years now at this point. So um, it's really cool to see how that's developed and how it's kind of stuck with us. Um, this is actually a perfectly timed, I think interview because our internship application just, uh, just opened. So um, a great, um, great chance to apply for that. But can you talk a little bit about what uh, the AJGA like how the AJJ prepared you just from like a career standpoint um, for where you are now and kind of the stuff that you're doing now? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think especially when I went into my internship, I, I thought I was a lot better worker than I was when I first went into my internship. Like I, I thought I had a pretty good work ethic and, and time management and overall like organizational skills. And then I got to the internship and I realized like, whoa, I need to really work on a lot of these things. And I think when you get an internship that teaches you a lot, not only about a job, but also about yourself, it's one of the most beneficial things that you could ever have like fall into your lap. Um, and so being able to grow over my two internship summers and lead me into that full-time job was just so um it's just such a great opportunity and and something that i'm always going to be grateful for and then once i actually got to uh, ajj full-time um i had to work my tail off and and there were so many people who were way better at their job than me uh, my wife included and seeing them do as well as they as they were doing at their job made me want to be better and, and it made me realize how much I still have to grow and, and continue to learn all these new skills. Um, and so that's something that that I'll always be grateful for in terms of what the AJGA gave me uh, from a, a professional side. And then, um, I mean, you can you can ask anybody like Andrew Greenfield expects the world of his staff and for a great reason because AJJ is held to such a high standard. And, and if he didn't hold us to those standards, then, uh, then no one would have grown in, in this role and in this job and that organization. And, and I'll always be thankful uh, to him for, for pushing me the way that he did. And I, I can't think of a better place to start a professional career than the AJJ. Oh, and so, you've obviously had a lot of experiences now going on six, seven years in this kind of junior golf space. And you've talked about your growth professionally, but talk a little bit about the growth of junior golf and kind of how that landscape has changed over your time in the space and kind of where you see it going from here. Yeah. I think even just in AJGA alone, I mean, you look at the number of playing opportunities that have been added over these last even two, three years, like the numbers are, are insane of how many tournaments you guys run now and um, and how many playing opportunities there are for these kids, which is amazing um, because that's one thing that, that I always lacked when I was growing up playing golf was just the opportunity. Um, and for, well, and for me that just the overall knowledge of junior golf and like where I should be playing and what I should be playing in and against what skill level and all that. And so I think just the overall education you guys have done to these junior golfers, I mean, it's just such a different landscape now than it was 10 years ago when I was a senior in high school. Um, I mean, it's, it's yeah, a completely different, different game. And um, it's great to see the, the growth in, uh, in not only all of junior golf, but I think we've seen a lot of growth within the women's side as well. I think the girls have such great opportunities, you know, to 
uh, play against their peers at the, the highest level, uh, the amount of exemptions they have into LPGA, Symmetra Tour, um, even just like high level amateur stuff uh, through AJGA is, is incredible. Um, there wasn't that much of that, even when I was an intern in full time. Um, so to see the growth that that has that is shown in the last few years, um, it's just really cool to see all these um, sponsors and and higher end tours get behind you guys and and truly understand you know what this game means to these kids and and how to really promote growth and excitement behind the game. So you knew this was going to come up at some point. But speaking of your uh, junior golf days, you, in fact, oh, did no. play in uh, in some AJGA tournaments. So I thought I would just educate our listeners on a yeah, few of your to. events. Oh, we have. We don't have to do that. That's okay. Well, We really you know, do. You know, what no, I love about this is that, um, is that I was actually at your your uh, one of your events as a junior golfer or as an intern, which was kind of fun, and we've talked about that before. But, you know, it, I think there's there's two sides to this. One, we, we kind of love to give you a hard time because, you know, I think we're, we're, we're like that. But I think, two, it goes to show that you don't always have to be the best golfer or best junior golfer or, you know, don't always have to – and you don't have to go on to – to play professional golf in order to have a successful career in the golf industry. And I think that's really important to know. That's a crazy way to phrase that, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you remember if you're a show lot course, about you your events? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of debating on whether, but show basically. Um, Justin and I talked about this before we started. Justin, okay, right here. Yeah. I'm going to need some scores. Yeah, let's put them up. Connor Sullivan scores we'll him, on the screen, please. We'll have we'll have him put <laughs> Connor's scores up. But uh, basically, Connor played in a, a couple of events and finished um, in the bottom half of all of them. But it's, it's awesome, awesome that, that you, you, you got the opportunity yeah, to do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I really the, – the only thing I wanted to bring up is I want to know – Walk me through the 93 you shot in the final round of the Coca-Cola Junior Championship at Boyne Highlands in 19 and 2013. I honestly, I, I, that was the worst round of golf I've ever played. And <laughs> kind of like I, like, I don't golf. know, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like the, so the day before shot 74 which i was pretty like excited about played really well like moved up the leaderboard pretty high um and then the next day like i don't know if i was tired or if i like or what but when i tell you that when i thought the center of the club face was the hosel it that's like that was the story of my day i think i shanked <laughs> six or seven golf balls in that round like it <laughs> genuinely just could not find the center of the face shanked so many shots and if you've ever played up in Boyne Highlands on the heather course you know that like if you're not in the fairway yeah you're toast like that rough is brutal. brutal well the rough it's super tree lined like the amount of the amount of provisionals I had to play from the fairway ridiculous like it was it was bad um but yeah, you know, that's golf. I mean, like I like I shot 74 the day before, shot 93 the next day. It's the it, golf is is the stupidest sport in that sense, but everybody's dealt or everybody's had that experience where they've played amazing and then they play terrible and it's just the way it is, but um I was really bummed to do that uh at an event that you were at Tim because <laughs> If you weren't there, we probably would have never had this conversation. And I, I wish you had been on a different team. <laughs> See, I'm so glad Tim brings this up because if this had come from me, I feel like you would have just taken it as a personal attack. But, but oh no, no it's still personal. The one that brings it up. <laughs> We talk about everybody's junior golf careers with them on the podcast, so uh, yeah, we had to bring them it up. Are at some high point. level junior golfers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look at yourself in that upper echelon. That's crazy. You got to get the self confidence up. I mean, you're a phenomenal golfer now, though. So to put it, yeah, I am. I am so much better at golf now than I was when I was 17. Which take that how you will, and and for. 
people who think they're not good enough, like just keep practicing, you'll get better. But yeah, I was bad. I was not good. How much of it for you is practice versus the QI 10 being dialed and the new ball being unbelievably hot? Yeah. Ball's hot. The ball is hot. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of text messages I've gotten from you in the last two weeks of people saying the golf ball is hot is it's, I honestly, I couldn't even put a number on it. Um, QI 10 is, is unreal. And for people like me who have a hard time finding the center of the glove face really helps. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, practice. I don't know if you could call it that. I think it's a lack of caring what I shoot now. And so it's just made me better because no matter what, I'm just out playing golf, having fun. So <laughs> yeah, that makes a huge difference though. Believe it or not, I always play my best with Thomas because I'm always like, I'm never thinking about my golf shots. I'm just waiting for the next time we're going to see a driver off the deck from him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's the most electric shot in golf and I will never retire it no matter what the circumstance is. I'm going to send Justin a couple of videos of you hitting driver off the deck. And I want Please him do. to yeah, insert that here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm just disappointed you got rid of the jumbo grip on the driver. You didn't translate that over to the QI 10. That thing, say what you want. Everyone who ever hit that thing was like, I, I hate to admit that this feels so good. <laughs> the, the jumbo grip, there was something about it. I don't know what it was, but it just felt so pure. Checks do out. you, do you get a lot of, um, I guess the, the next question I have, which maybe bring this, this thing back on the rails a little bit. Um, but do you get a lot of players asking, and not necessarily to to be supported by TaylorMade, or what is like the process if a player is kind of interested in um, being supported by TaylorMade, whether that's clubs or balls or you know however that. What's the process for that? Because I'm sure a lot of people, you know, have that question, and I'm sure you kind of answer that a lot um, over the course of the year. Yeah, for sure. Um, so a big thing for us is is um, obviously promoting the game and and helping how we can. Um, now, with that said, we do have some like qualifications into receiving free product and and levels of support that we can give. Um, so it's not just we can't just be given as much as we want to. We can't give free product to everybody because at the end of the day, we are a business. We if we just give away stuff, we're not going to make any money. Um, but the best way to get in contact with us and and um, and learn more about our development program is. Um, just by sh sending us some emails, um, there's a junior support email. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just junior support at tailormadegolf.com. Uh, every AJGA member gets um, a little like kind of index card that kind of er, that has that um, that email on it, and and they can shoot us an email. And one of the members of our team, whether it's myself or Andrew Morgan or uh, RJ Cesario, who just started with us, or Manny Girona, like one of us will I'll do our best to get back to everybody as soon as we can. And um, we do get a lot of emails. So if, if we ever miss somebody, like don't take it personally. It's just hard to keep up with all the emails that we get. Um, but that I think that's the best way uh, to get in contact with us and, and to potentially see how we can uh, support someone. And if at the end of the day, if, if, we can't give that support um, in terms of free product. Everybody still has access to the AJGA discount with their membership, which is you know 60% off golf balls, which is awesome, and 40% off any other equipment, clubs, and um, hats, gloves, you name it, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different ways that, that people can get in contact with us and also play our stuff. Um, so it's just, uh, just a matter of... of having the or having the ability to or not the ability but just uh sending us an email and, and waiting for us to get back to you i think it's very cool to see everything you guys do for the players but not just that i feel like you guys don't just look at it as a business you guys have a lot of these relationships with golfers who whether they play tailor made or not um they they recognize you guys they see familiar faces out there and i feel like you guys just do a great job connecting with everybody making these players feel comfortable so they can have those conversations um, but one conversation that has come up several times that I want to use to take this right back off the rails. So sorry, Tim. In a previous episode, we did bring up the foot race that many people have talked about. For those of you who are, unf are unfamiliar, go back, I believe it was in episode two or three. 
um, early on in the process, we talked about the fact that Connor claims he can take any junior on the AJGA circuit in a foot race. And Connor, I want to give you the chance to kind of sell people on that, defend yourself here, because again, frankly, I just don't think you can do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, and like I remember from that episode, thanks. So thanks for the call out. Um, a lot of this came from the argument of like our golfers athletes, to which I said most of them, yes. And I included myself in that category, which you found absurd. And that's where the argument started. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where the argument started of, I believe I could beat. And I want to, I don't think I can beat every single junior golfer. Cause I know that there are some stellar athletes out there who are way more like athletically gifted than I am. I think the number you told me was 95%. Yeah, no, I believe that. <laughs> That's a fair percentage. I don't think you understand. And this is the lamest thing for me to say. When I was when I played high school baseball, I got thrown out one time. I got caught stealing once and it was going to third. And that's because the ball bounced off the backstop right to the catcher. So I don't want to say that I'm the fastest man alive, but some have compared me to Pete Crow Armstrong. So for you Cubs fans who know who that is, you know that I'm pretty quick. I just I'm disappointed we're not going to see you here coming up, uh, junior players, because I was really looking forward to just lining it up on the range um, and just sending you to get absolutely dusted by any player in that field. But at some point, I still think we're going to have to do it, do a nice little side episode here on the podcast, um, perhaps live from Chateau, and just we're going to have to put this to the test. I'm just very intrigued to see where you finish in a foot race. I yeah no I I I would love to put my money where my mouth is and with that being said I will probably get beat but until that <laughs> happens I'm gonna go ahead and stick with with my claim that I'm Words faster are cheap. than a lot of people. Words are cheap. It's, yeah, you know, like I will be proven wrong, but until that day comes, then yeah. I'm gonna. I mean, the confidence is key. That's. That's 90% of the battle out here. I feel like even in golf, that's most of the battle. But especially when it comes to being a grown man trying to compete with children <laughs> in a foot race, the confidence is key. <laughs> Someone who hasn't fully sprinted probably in the last five or six years. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I, don't, I don't know if my body could hold up sprinting more than 50 feet. There's a good well, chance I could blow a hamstring halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> I just right now I'm picturing you being like Michael Scott in the parking lot and just having the, just having the sign up there, just tracking speed and you just sprinting by this thing at the kingdom, just getting some work in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you think do you think you're the fastest on your team? I think Andrew might be able to take you. I know this is way off the rails, but I'm no, getting to the you know, So, you know, I actually think a good race would be between me and RJ, who just joined our team. Yeah, yeah I was thinking that, too. He seems he seems like he's athletically built. RJ is the most, like, still in college slash, like, high school shape because he played golf in college. So he had to he had to be on, like, a workout regimen. Um, it's either it's either me or him, but one of us, two for sure. Um, we got the Ping Junior Solheim Cup and Junior President's Cup coming up. Um, talk a little bit about those events. You're going to be out at both of them, correct? Or at least one no, of them? No, no. I'm, I'm going to hopefully be at uh, Ping Junior Solheim um, if, if schedule allows. Uh, I'd love to go there because um, I'll be at regular Solheim. So uh, that's exciting. But I'll be in Ireland during oh, that's right. Junior President's Cup. Yeah. So obviously those events are big deals now. Um, what is it? I mean, having those events, just even from like a junior perspective from you, you playing junior golf and just where you're at now, like what does it mean to have those big events for these juniors to play and really get that experience on a big stage like that? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I mean, not only like how hard that these boys and girls have to work to make those teams and, and the elite company that they're with, um, not only in that moment, but also just historically. Like if you look at some of the players who have played in um, both Junior Presidents Cup and Junior Solheim Cup, like it's that list is is elite. Um, and I mean, 
you always see like you always have those few in junior golf that are like you know are going to make it one day and then you have some surprises so it's it's just cool to to see you know who made it to that level when they were every or when they were this age and and who you know developed later in their career and and um i think it's a really cool goal for all or for everyone to have is to make these teams and and have the opportunity to go represent their country and and um get that you know team aspect experience before they make it to the pga lpga and, and go to represent their country on the big stage um and i think you know with those two events along with Wyndham cup um i think it's just a really cool uh opportunity to again play team golf because you know golf is such an individual sport and to be able to have that team aspect every once in a while and and change the format um going into match play and you have four ball foursomes singles um having a team that you rely on to bring home the trophy is it's really cool and just um a good change of pace and, and really unique and and um overall amazing uh, opportunities for for so many players um, it's certainly i feel like a unique opportunity for you guys as well because i know something that we talked about a lot was um, early in the podcast was the success of Nick Dunlap. Obviously, he had just coming off the Amex win kind of right when we had launched the podcast. And so that's somebody who, at least in your time, has been somebody that you've seen go from junior golfer, collegiate golfer, now successful professional golfer. So what's that experience like on your end? And how is that kind of just – I'd have to imagine it's very rewarding seeing everything he's done. Yeah, I mean, Nick's had an unreal year. And in and- – you know, for everybody who's had the the opportunity to get to meet him and and get to know him, like he's just he's the greatest guy. Like he he works his butt off. He's he's so focused on what he does, um, and it, it it couldn't have happened to a better person. You know, Nick's um, he's a great example of what hard work and dedication really looks like, and and how you know you might not feel like you are at the top, you know, recruiting your class or you might not be the best, but if you just kind of keep your head down, grind, really set a great list of goals and, and work towards those every day, like you can, you can reach them quicker than expected. Um, But yeah, it's, it's great seeing him have all the success he has. Um, I mean, you mentioned other people that, I've seen in junior golf and professional, like, uh, Akshay Batia, like he, his player of the year, uh, season was when I was a, I think it was, I was a TA, um, was 2018 or 2017, Tim. I don't know if you can think of that off the top of your head. I think it was, uh, I want to say 17, but it might've been 18. Might've been, I think it was 18. Um, but just seeing him like, and he took such a different route, right? Like he, he decided, to just turn professionally right away. And, and while he, he found some struggles early, like he never found a reason to give up, you know, he, he was determined and even him, like he was, he's such a cool kid in junior golf. Like it, I was so happy to see him finally get his first win last year at the, at the Barracuda. And then again, this year. Um, so it's fun watching so many of these players, you know, age into professional golf and, beer on the higher end of amateur golf um best one luke clanton i mean what a summer he's had but i remember luke when he was when he was just this tiny little kid who every (laughs) final round he'd wear those american flag pants (laughs) that's right even in 95 degree like florida heat he was rocking the american flag pants and like if if you didn't remember luke for his golf you remembered him for his outfits and so I mean, he's another one that it's just, it's been an awesome journey to watch him. And I mean, the I, list can go on like Michael Thor Bjornsson, Carl Phillips. Um, I mean, God. Rose Zhang. Yeah. Rose Zhang. Like I'm trying to think of, of more just who have had that immediate success, but it's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, I mean, Akshay is looking at, 
potentially a President's Cup team, which would be really cool too, because that would be a translation from the Junior President's Cup to the President's Cup in, I mean, literally what, four years or something along those lines. So Yeah, some, I think, yeah, 2018 he was on that team. Yeah, so it's just really cool, really cool transition there um, and all of the, the time that, that they're able to put in and um, be able to, you know, compete at that high level. So, yeah, I understand. agree with you on that. It's awesome to see and being here 10 years, I've been able to see quite a few of those, you know, Sam Burns. And um, that that's one of the ones that really comes to my mind. It was really cool seeing knowing him as a junior and where he's gotten to now. So, yeah. Be awesome. No, well, Connor, we really appreciate it. I know you've got to get going. You're busy day at the kingdom um, doing, getting people all set up out there, getting people fitted. So won't keep you too much longer, but before, you say goodbye. Is there one message you would like to deliver to the junior golfers or anybody listening now that you're on this side of it? You know, you're, um, you're on the manufacturing side. You've seen a lot of those people have that success. You know, what, what have you seen from those people that's given them that success, making the jump to the next level? Yeah, I think it's just, um, I think it's just hard work. You know, I think, um, I think the people you see that have the most success, are just the ones that work the hardest. Um, but they also don't take it too seriously. Like they know at this point in time, it's not life or death. Like it's a, it's a game, have fun with it, work hard, but just make sure you never lose the reason why you started playing in the first place. Right? Like we all started playing golf cause it was fun and we enjoyed playing it. Like, yeah, some people were instantly good at it and they're like, Oh cool. It's fun to be good at something, but 99% of us are like, this is a, a fun game to play and, and I want to continue doing it. So just make sure that, that you always, um, remember why you started playing. Cause if you're enjoying what you do and, and you're working hard at it, like good things will come. And, um, and for people like me who, who did not have a career playing professionally, like this game has brought me so much, like just because playing isn't, going to work out doesn't mean that your golf journey is coming to an end you know like i i've worked in golf my basically my whole life in professionally um my first job was at a golf course just running carts um i did that all through college and then obviously ajj into tailormade and so there's just so many different opportunities for this sport to to remain a part of your life and um and it's just a really great industry to be a part of. Um, so anyone who's who's thinking, whether it's professional golf or or if this is more the track that you want to go, like either way, just make sure that you work as hard as you can and and you set goals and do whatever it is possible to help you achieve those goals. It's the best way I can put it. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks, Connor. We appreciate it. Thanks for letting us roast you a little bit. But obviously, there's some really good uh, points in there, too, about, you know, junior golf and kind of the progression there. So we appreciate it and uh, hope to see you soon out there at a tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. I hope this was uh, – hope you're able to use anything if not just throw the entire uh, episode out. So appreciate you having me. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking it. Like I said, we'll we'll throw some clips in here, but uh, looking forward to lining up this race here soon. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna email Justin those clips of you hitting driver off the deck right now. Please, please do. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. You have a good. Thanks, one. guys. Yeah, Thomas, I want to definitely thank Connor for joining us. I think you and you and him especially have formed a great relationship through you know the AJGA um, over the course of the last few years, and um, not just with him, but obviously the relationship with TaylorMade and the AJGA is just phenomenal. So big thanks to him for coming on. Yeah, no, great to have him. I said great, um, one of my best friends in the world, great guy who thankfully got to know through the AJGA here. So appreciate him taking the time. He was a guy that. You know, we'd kind of talked about it. He knows so much about the AJGA, having been an intern, full-timer, now working in partnership with the AJGA. So um, another guy who's seen all sides of it. So um, always great to have him around, great to see him at events. They just do so much for us, so much for the kids. So really appreciate that. But I uh, want to take us into, Tim, a new segment that, again, Ideas Guy, I uh, we were thinking, you know, how can we – how can we change it up and kind of explain some of the things that are going on here with all the excitement we talked about earlier in the episode and talked a little bit with Connor junior president's cup ping junior Solheim cup. And we talked about the interesting thing about junior president's cup is that last spot will be determined 
this upcoming week at junior players. And so there's a lot on the line for some of these guys. So we are going to pass it over to Jacob Kennedy, um, Director of Operations and Rules, who has become one of our, like, quote, unquote, rankings gurus. Um, as far as guy, he's figured out the math. He's Big always tracking guy. huge numbers guy of where people are going to jump depending on certain finishes. So um, we are going to pass it over to Jacob, and he's going to take us to Bubble Watch. Tom Tim, thank you, and welcome to the most exciting week in junior golf, some would say, uh, especially this week with Junior President's Cup spot number 12 on the line for Team USA. Here you'll see our bubble in our rankings. These are the people that are next in line that haven't quite solidified their spot yet. On the right, you'll see their current average points on the Rolex uh, AJGA rankings. How they get that number, you're probably wondering. Our system, as you play in events, obviously you get points. We have a divider system. It's over the past 365 days. I'll briefly get into that here in a little bit. And as you play in more events, you make more points. You're divided by how many events you play in. You get this number. Uh, for example, for junior players, the winner of that event will get 225 points. Obviously a lot when you're looking at these averages. So if we get into the bubble here, um, we've got some names we've seen before, some newcomers. Uh, first up, Mason Howe. He's a front runner. He's had a good year. He won Billy Horschel last year, so he's sitting on that. Played well in RLX match play uh, this summer. He got second place. He's the front runner. You might say that's a good spot. I'd say it's a little bit of a scary spot. He's going to have to play well. He didn't play in junior players last year. So all of these points that he gets, it's going to add one more number to his divider. So who knows how that's going to impact. But a top five or so finish here will probably solidify his spot on the team. Next up. Next up, we've got Michael Reby, and number two on the priority list. He's Mr. Consistent. He's a regular top 10 finisher on uh, the AJGA, but also outside events. He's been playing well as of late. The interesting thing with Michael Reby, when we're comparing him to the other seven people on this list, he's not playing in junior players. So you're probably wondering, how does that impact his ranking? Well, he did play junior players last year, so that will fall off. Like I mentioned, the 365 days for our rankings to roll over. Those points that he gained from last year are going to fall off, and his divider is now going to go by one more, down by one more event. So who knows how that's going to impact his ranking, but he is the only one of the seven here that's not playing at junior players. Next up... Carson Bertinoli. He's had a great year. He won our team tailor-made invitational at Old Waverly Golf Club and has played relatively consistent all year in all of our events. Um, so he played okay at junior players last year. He'll lose a few points from it, so he's going to need to play well, similar to Mason, uh, but not in a bad spot at all. Right behind him, we've got Kihei Akina. Uh, Kihei, similar to the other guys, he's been consistent, hasn't won anything, but he also hasn't finished outside of the top 20 since last September in any events. Um, so he's been very impressive, just hasn't been able to close the door yet. In order to solidify that last spot, he's probably going to have to come close to closing that door here at junior players. Um, but we will see he's played well, so certainly possible on his, his end. Next up. We have Trevor Gucheski. He has been a popular name in the junior golf world after winning the United States Junior Amateur at Oakland Hills. You're probably wondering, how is he not already on the team? What if I told you that he was not even in the top 500 in the rankings about a month ago before that win? We haven't seen him play a whole lot of AJGA. He's played other events, uh, but that win skyrocketed at him in our rankings. And now he's sitting up there with a the chance to move on. It's going to take a pretty good uh, performance by him, but certainly a top five finish is going to have him in the discussion for that final spot. Next up, Sterling Hurd. Very similar to some of our players on this list. Hasn't won this year, but has played really well. Some very consistent golf and... Similarly to as we get farther down this list, he's going to need to play really well. At this point, you know, you're looking at these points. He's about 10 average points behind. He's going to need help no matter what happens unless he gets the win, a win, and he's, he's in. But anything other than that, he's going to need a little bit of help here, but certainly not impossible. Number seven on our list. Again, you're probably looking at these numbers. 
13 average points back. We're talking about Henry Guan here. Very popular name though, is he was on the 2022 Junior President's Cup team. Actually hit the shot that really closed the deal against the international team. Sitting in 18 fairway at Myers Park, 240 out, three meadow in hand, people surrounding the green, hits a phenomenal shot. So people should be wondering, is he gonna be able to make a run here? Again, he's, he's far enough back that we're really looking at a win in your in situation, um, but certainly possible he's played consistent golf for the past two to three years, really. Now there is a spot available, a final spot for the international team as well. So we have several players playing this event with a chance to clinch that final spot. Now their spot is a little bit different. It's determined by WAGGER, not our AJGA ranking. So it's a little bit more complex on determining who has uh, the real chance at getting there. Um, but that's something to watch out for as you're following along on our leaderboard uh, next week. Back to you, Tom, Tim. Tim, I don't know about you, but this just kind of got me a little excited for what's going down next week. And um, junior players seeing the numbers break down and what's on the line for these guys. Um, it's, I mean, it's always an exceptional tournament just held in conjunction with the players. Um, it was a great vision by Billy Bet Detlef back in the day of just, he wanted the junior version and that's exactly what he's created. We play the same yardages, the same course setup, And so you really get to see the talent on display. So these guys coming in here with a lot on the line, it's going to be really interesting to see how things pan out. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be awesome. And I think you're going to see some really cool, really cool stuff come out of that and really get hyped up for, you know, the actual Junior President's Cup coming up. So that was awesome. Thank you, Jacob, for that. Uh, it was a good time. We'll have to figure out ways to kind of bring him in to do some more similar things in the future. Our so. very own Steve Kornacki. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe he'll have to do jerseys instead of khakis. <laughs> um, but definitely thanks, everybody, for listening to the episode. That's kind of all we've got for uh, today. Um, if you don't follow us on social media, definitely do that. It's at AJJ Golf. That's on Instagram, X, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, I think we have a Snapchat too, maybe. Um, but definitely follow <laughs> us on all those channels and DM us if you have any questions. We will periodically answer some of those. But thank you so much for joining us. And Thomas, thank you for the time today. Anytime, Tim. Love doing it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, guys. You have a great uh, rest of your day. Bye.